Well, hello there. This is AbFab, your absolutely fabulous digital host of this digital pub called Cheshire Matters. And we're here to have a go at all the politicians, especially the ones, yes, especially the ones that actually pretend to be clever, like the Chancellor. (laughs) Yes. But Statsman, we know that you are clever. Say hello. Hello. Well, I'd like to think you're probably cleverer than these divvies in Parliament. <laughs> just, uh, you know, that's, a, that's a low bar, that one. That's a low that's bar. Very, very, very. You smashed say hello it. Hello to, uh, to our lovely listeners. Thanks Indeed. for tuning in again. It's always a pleasure. And we also have the gazelle, who, I tell you what, he's turning into a cannibal because he's actually talking about having lamb, rogan, Josh, whatever it is. I am actually, yeah, I just mentioned that, which I will again to the listeners. Good evening, listeners. And it's a bit of sad news that Mary had a little lamb, it's fleece, is why it is snow. But Mary loves the curry, and the fleece is now a throw. I just thought to start off with that. <laughs> very good, very good. Well, I think we're all going to become throws. Throw outs, throwbacks. I think, actually, we're all defunct. We really are. I mean, according to Rachel Reeves, there isn't really that much hope, is there? It's all going to be bad. Oh, and we're all going to be poor. Is that right? Stats so man. we've actually had 14 years of austerity. Now we're going to have another five. That's 19 years of austerity. That's some going, that, you know. I tell you what, I mean, the biggest thing that came across to me, I mean, obviously we're going to be talking about the budget. Everybody's poo-pooed this whole thing about a twenty billion pound black hole. Where is it? Anybody got any ideas? Yeah, it's in their imaginations. Ah, ah, that's a good one. It's probably way more than that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a what, massive 20, 20, black hole. Twenty billion black hole. Wait till wait till it, wait till you get to twenty twenty nine. You you won't even recognise it. Then. It's like the Warrington <laughs> Borough Council one point eight billion debt. <laughs> It was uh, swallowed us up by then, the black hole. That's the oh. black hole. Uh, well, and I believe we have a black hole here in Cheshire as well. Is that not right? They're, Probably. They're operating on some form of a deficit. I, I heard a little story from our little chatty ratty around here today. How about this? The people that cut the grass are allotted a certain amount of hours to do the job. Now, are you listening? And this is in the area, Cheshire West and Chester. And this is what I was told. And they were told that if they didn't get it all finished within that allotted time, they were just to leave a little meadow in the middle of the field. And they will say, it's a nature reserve. And they'll put it out. Don't worry about it. Uh-huh. Said, Don't worry about it. You know? but. I haven't seen very many nature reserves in Little Neston. Have you, Mark? No, but that might explain why somebody decided, right, we'll cut the grass on this big field by mine and just cut round the edge of it. <laughs> yes. don't, don't know what the point of that was. That grass didn't get cut all summer. Well, so the kids really enjoyed that, thanks. There is a nature reserve in Neston, but not Little Neston. And we're talking about all the grass verges and things of that nature, that they, they get cut. They get a lot of time allotted to them. Mm-hmm. And this is what I heard today. I mean, I'm telling you now, there are getting to be a lot of chatty ratties out there who are starting totally to agree. spill the beans. We might need a different name. What about Snitchy Witchy? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> or how about Loose Tongues? Uh, we can't actually say who it is because if we do, they're probably going to lose their job in the gardening department. <laughs> you grass. Nah. I'm only, I'm only grass. Yeah, no grass. Pun, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, anyway, uh, initial thoughts on the budget. Statsman, go ahead. What, the fudge is? We've been fudged, haven't we? Yeah. Well, let's, let's face it. The, the, the woman who made it the budget Claims she's an she was an economist at the Bank of England, 
Guido kind of says that's wrong and she was in the complaints department and that'll become evident when we look at the budget. I mean, to sum up, even the Quangos aren't happy with this, are they? Yeah. yeah no, what are they saying? It's not going to deliver growth. Wasn't that the plan? Mm. But there's she a might... possibility of it over more than one term. The possibility. Cool. Carry on. I, I, I'll be honest, they don't know what they're doing, do they? No, I don't no. think so. What they do is their social interventions actually cause the problems they're attempting to fix. So like these taxes on businesses, they're effectively a tax on working people. You know, just the emphasis on working people, whatever they are. Because everything's just going to get passed on to the consumer. Look, the NI for businesses, that's going to inf- affect employees and consumers. Yeah, absolutely. It's, honestly, all these things, it's like I mentioned before, like the minimum wage, you know, that wasn't part of the budget. But in the hospitality sector, that's just causing inflation because it's just being passed on to the customer. And plus the so fact not, that you might have to let go of certain people. Yeah, that's never a good thing, is it? So that's going to contribute to... Well, they're going to get... As, as Mark well. said, as Mark mentioned then, the whole idea of this exercise is, for the next five years, is to create growth. And every quango, as, as Mark said, and every other institution out there, have said that it's not going to create growth. So they've got it wrong. Yes. Mm. They've got it wrong. It's not going to their 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 vision is to 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 make obviously more growth in the in the five years they're in. Well, it's the only, not going to happen. The only thing that is growing will be the public services because they've raised taxes and that money's gone out to the public services. I mean, you could say that if you are going to raise tax, you've got three options. You've got income tax, VAT, and national insurance. And if you want to raise huge amounts of money without leaning on one of those, then, you know, you, you've got a problem. It's as simple as that. Now, I think that there are big risks in this budget, big risks. And I think that she knows that. So she's hiding the fact that you're not going to be able to see the benefits of these at least until their their second term in parliament because she's banking on the fact that number 1 if you improve public services say for example they are successful with the NHS they're easing the burden of health people are healthier so they're going to take less days off work aren't they quote unquote so there is some method to the madness there in that. But you see, the fact of the matter is, I don't think it matters how much money you throw at the NHS. Those waiting lists are not going to come down until somebody gets a grip of it from the inside out. You can't just throw money and say to somebody, get that fixed, because that's not the problem. Go ahead, Mark. There's a lot of people who aren't happy. I mean, the markets weren't too happy. You know what I'm worried about? Are we going to get higher interest rates again? Yes, that's a distinct because possibility. They're to, well, they're meant to be bringing them down, but it's looking like now it, that might not happen. Uh, I think this is going to backfire. I mean, what it what, <laughs> well, what I can see growing, you said there's no growth. What I see growing is a list of people they've upset so far. I mean, I've probably missed a few out, but we've got pensioners, small businesses, working people. Students today, students, oh, that's a pearl of that one. Landlords, publicans, farmers, the unions. I think a lot of their own voters are annoyed with them. I think the only people who aren't upset is criminals, illegal immigrants, terrorists, and those who hate us. Seems well, the rail workers them, aren't, aren't um, pissed off. They're, you know, they're doing quite good out of everything. Mm, some of them are. Well, yeah, yeah, they're out there. You'll still see well. strikes coming up. You reckon? Sure. There'll be some in the future, yeah. Well, I, we got to wait until we uh, see the spending review. But mm-hmm. when you look at everything that's going on, if you've got a black hole and you put a figure on it, well, nobody can get down to the bottom of it exactly how much this black hole is. Nobody can find out because none of the government institutions are releasing enough information for people to make an educated decision. But... If you were to say that black hole is $22 billion, 
she's actually gone beyond that. She's already spent $42 billion. And that's likely with all other additional spending to go up to $68 billion. So if it's a $22 billion black hole, <laughs> But oh, you're 80. spending between <laughs> 40 and 68 billion. What's that going to do to that black hole? Uh, quadruple it. So you just, I, I don't know. I can't work out these, I can't work out government finance. But they're infested. They're investing. She told you, don't you? Yeah, listen? they're infested. You got it right they're, the first time. They're investing. <laughs> they're investing to grow. That's what it's about. It's know. growth. Growth. They're investing this 70 billion near enough for growth. And the institutions have already told them that there won't be any growth for the next four years. It'll be minimal. Mm. So it's like, as I say, Warrington Borough Council, I'm sorry to keep going back to them, but they've dis- this 1.8 billion that they've borrowed to return an investment. They kept telling us it was 20 million a year what they put back into the services. But they've never, ever put any proof of it. And the, the it's just free beer tomorrow, to put it in Mark's terms. It's free beer tomorrow, jam tomorrow. It's, everything's oh. tomorrow. It's not going to happen. Oh, speaking of beer. Tomorrow. Speaking of beer. Oh, we got a penny off. Hey. Oh, we're, we're saved. That's <laughs> it now. Open loads of new pubs. That's it. They'll all be rammed at the weekend. Well, I mean, seriously. <laughs> I don't even think the money that they're going to be throwing out to the local authorities is going to be making them jump for joy either. They're going to put money out for education. They're going to think, you know, there's a lot of spending going on. I mean, there's something like about 74 billion pounds worth of spending and about 42 billion worth of tax increases. I cannot get my head around it. And I'm not stupid. To spend more, as Trevor's just said, there to be spending more that you got, it means you've got to borrow. So the borrowing goes up. And I don't know what's happening with the pound at the moment. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll give way to Trevor and then to Statsman, but there's predictions that you're going to start to see a weakening of the pound. That means that pensions are going to start to get hit. I think that they're going to be looking around and scratching their heads in about 18 months' time saying, why did we listen to her? Why? I mean, Rishi Sunak, I mean, he was savage with her. He was absolutely savage. I mean, the main thing that everybody's got to realize is that none of this, none of these tax rises were in their manifesto. In fact, they distinctly said they were not going to raise taxes. There you go. Go ahead, Trevor. Yeah, just a quick point about the King of the Cow Pack. <clears throat> Sorry, the King of the North, Andy Burnham. Uh, King somebody was telling me the other day, uh, well, what it was, the, the Cow Pack. I mean, if anybody knows Andy Burnham like I know him, they'll realise why I said that, because over the years he would stand if in the Cow Pack. you knew pat. Andy like I knew Andy. Yeah, I oh, mean, he, he, oh, he would, oh, what a ga- He's not a gal, though, he, is he? He stood. He stood for more positions, and, and he would stand in a cow pack if he thought he could get elected. Anyway, back to the king. And he the did North. get elected. <laughs> yeah, and he's the cow pack of, of Manchester, and it's a team that packs. Trevor and, and everybody else should be ashamed of. Manchester City. And he got he Rubbish. come to Warrington, and he couldn't get out of here quick enough at seventy-eight mile an hour, and he got fined. But anyway, that's another story. So remember that. Oh, there's a cow pack. Anyway, that was so he's turned around. Fastest cow pat I've ever seen. He's turned around and and stood a uh, stood a middle finger up at Keir Starmer when Keir Starmer said, "Right, well, the the capping on the buses is going to three pounds per journey," and Andy Burnham said, "No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. We're keeping it at two pound." He said, "I don't care what you say. We're keeping it at two pound." Well, that's going to three pound, whether he likes it or not. So, where's the other pound coming from? Who's got to pay for that pound? Because somebody's got to pay for it. I say it's going to be Warrington. Because they're going to lend them the money. Yeah, we can pick up the tab. That's easy. But, um, yeah, Andy Burnham there, he's, he's again, making himself king of the north, who said that within one year of his leadership, he will stop homelessness, sleeping on the streets. Well, that didn't happen, did it? And now he's saying he's going to keep his cap. Well, 
What's his space? That's all I can say. Well, it isn't going to happen. We know it. Go ahead, Statsman. Yeah, so I thought, okay, maybe everyone's just, it's hate on Labour at the minute, isn't it? I mean, we've all got biases. I can't stand them. So I thought, I'll tell you what, I'll play devil's advocate and I'll try and find some good things. So I looked at a, a quite a broad spectrum of common economists. <laughs> I looked at a broad spectrum of economists. Okay. <laughs> I've not found any of them who say anything good. <laughs> so, well, I didn't see anything. The Institute of Fiscal Studies, negative. Mm. The OBR, negative. Okay. Institute um, for whatever it's called. Uh, Institute for Business or whatever, you know. No. Fiscal studies. Yeah, they're, they're all, yeah. they're, they're not, they've not got good things to say, you know, about them. And uh, they're all having a go at the farmers for wanting to try and hand their land over. But um, those people work for buttons and they get hammered all the time and they work long hours. A bit like Statsman, really. We know how long he works. Yeah. He's a hard-working man, and he doesn't get paid for it, do you? No, well, they've got their own protest, Charity. haven't they? Have you seen it? They've got their own protest. I think it's the 19th of November. Muck spreaders at Parliament. Spray them, baby. Exactly. Shit on shit. Yeah, let's see what happens. <laughs> That's what they did in France. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I, I've yeah. I got to beat myself out on that. I, I don't think I'll get pulled up yeah. for that. I think it'll be all right. Fine. Go on, Stats. This is why socialists should be kept as far away from capitalist economies as possible. Because they know they need capitalism, right? Otherwise, we end up drinking puddles and eating pigeons. Yet they try to implement their social socialist nonsense, and it just doesn't work. Yeah. God, the sooner these are gone, the better. But well, we've we only got endure a little bit more. <laughs> we've we've only got until twenty twenty nine to uh, endure them. Mm. Possibly, maybe even before if they implode. Yeah, it's very possible, though, isn't it? Or, if miracles happen, I believe in miracles. Yes, mm -hmm. Trump wins, and then, ding, ding, round one. And Trump comes out of the red corner, going across to the blue corner, over here, and where's Pop at Starmer? I want to see it. I'm watching. I, you know, I'm trying to get to the polls. I mean, I was liking some of the things that were coming out. There was, uh, they were getting fed up of going to the machines, you know, the touch machines in some of the states, and you touch, and they were touching for Trump, and it was lighting up Harris on the machine. And so, some of the other supporters, you know, the Trump supporters, in places like California where you don't actually have to prove you are who you are in order to go in and vote. They asked, they said, do you want my ID? And they said, no, we believe you. So they just said any name and they just went in and voted. And they went in at four different polar stations and voted for Trump. So maybe there's some sort of a balance there going on. Did, did they try and press Harris and see if he got Trump? No, it was just broken. No, no you press if you press Harris, Harris, you get Harris. You get Harris. Yeah, of course you did. Yeah. You know, that was going on last time as well. I mean, well, I the, how can done. they get away with rigging the machines like that? I mean, that's just if that happened just over say, here, no. nobody would vote. They just say no, 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 it's fine, no, and they just pretend nothing's happened. I, I, I think that's and just it all goes to court, and then a Democrat judge will wave it away. If it's in a particular oh, area, yeah, it does. That's exactly what happens. Yeah, and they said that the polls are showing that. Um, Trump is going to lose Texas. <laughs> that okay. Kamala Harris is in the lead well, in Texas. I mean, if you believe that, you believe anything. Yeah, they said she's, she's three points ahead in uh, Iowa, haven't they? And, and no. No, nobody knows where it's come from. She's just yeah. gone three points ahead in Iowa. Mm. She was, yeah, she, she was behind. And then, like Trev said, all of a sudden. And all of a sudden, she's gone three Ooh. points ahead. You know, this media stuff, I, I, sometimes I don't believe them. You know, I was watching the BBC. Oh, you don't believe I, them sometimes? I oh, I don't think sometimes they're telling the truth. Really? Yeah. Trevor, you when, uh... strike me as a very astute and observant individual. Well, I was watching that BBC, and I can't remember what it was, what programme it was on that, and he said, Coronation Street is a fictional place. Absolutely what? bananas. Nah, I've been there, mate. It's definitely real. Yep. Definitely real. Got, yes, and the Rover's return delivers pints at it does. a penny less. Yeah. 
been in there. Oh, penniless, yeah, you're right there, no. I went in there and I wasn't old enough. Shh. Well, there you go. Don't, so don't tell right. license him. So wait, you know, so, that, so that's the BBC telling lies and when they said it's a fictional place because we've all been there. So yeah. Was, they all, all he did was lie because I remember 10 minutes before Trump won, Hillary Clinton was, it was 98 or 96%. The winner. The winner. <laughs> then next minute, Trump's won. So what? <laughs> oh, it's just, I don't know. I, I wow. just hope and pray that he does get it. Because if he does, that's the WEF finished. Right. He is going to go through them like a dose of salts. And I think Putin will be saying, hey, let's be friends again, comrade. I hope, I hope so, because last time he said he was going to do all this stuff, and that was the only thing that I felt a bit let down by. He did everything he said he was going to do with the economy and, and you know, geopolitical stuff. Great. Yeah, he just well, never got round to sticking them all in jail because they did it to him. Well, he went to North Korea and he had a fast, <laughs> a fast, you're getting that, with Kim Jong-un, okay? Kim Jong-un ate all the food while he was there. And uh, Trump lost about eight or nine pounds in the days that he was there because he didn't eat. There was nothing to eat. Anyway, I'm pretty certain that if he doesn't win, I think there is going to be civil unrest in America. And I think Texas are going to come out and they're going to be yelling the battle cry. Well, you know what that battle cry is, don't you, Trevor? Yep. Get that steak on that barbecue. <laughs> no, get that cow on the barbecue. On the cow on the barbecue. Yeah, that's right. Uh, they're, they're talking about Kamala. <laughs> yeah. Slight, slight bent on British humor there. Anyway, um, so we could actually turn around and say, quite simply, that the budget really isn't a very good budget. Correct? Correct. Mm. Stinks. So we would say then that we're not prepared to give them another term because she's expecting it to start providing returns within 10 years, assuming that they're still in office. <laughs> 10 years. 10 years. That's, that's growth in it. You know, she, did, she didn't say growth. She didn't say over how long. <laughs> well, mm. she needs another term in order for uh, the fruit to start bearing. And I don't think that's going to happen. They're, they're not going to be in. 2029, everybody's going to get rid of them. Quite simply, I mean, you cannot have government that acts like a dictatorship and then tries to say, oh, no, we're not bad people, really. You know, we're good people. Yeah, but who's going to get in? That's a very, very interesting question now. What are we looking at for 2029? Well, it certainly is. Conservative to rebuild themselves quickly to get in. It oh, certainly God. isn't going to be. I don't think it's going to be the conservatives. I think they're gone. I think they're finished. I honestly don't think it's going to be the Liberals either. It can't be the Liberals, can it? They've, they've, they've never been in power that I can remember. I nearly bit what? my daughter's head off tonight when she said, we need a Lib Dem government. And I just went, right, out. Where were you thinking that you wanted a lift to? Uber it, baby. Go on, out. Yeah, you're right there. Uh, I mean, China's just, uh, not China, Japan, sorry. They've just got rid of their Lib Dem government, haven't they? Yeah. Or no, she no, wants no. to consent for it. We don't want any wishy-washy liberals anymore. And we don't want any communists. In fact, we want a dictator like Trump. <laughs> we want him in. We want him to take over. Because we think that we're going to be a lot better off. It's either him or Putin. One or the other. I don't care. Yeah. If we can get rid of them. That will be fine. Hey, what's the matter? Putin would be pretty good. You reckon? Yeah, he'd be pretty. Well, you know where he's well, done with him. Hey, look, look at how many arrests Russia had for hurty, hurty words on social media. I know, but look how many drones are hitting Moscow, mate. Three hundred and thirty-three. <laughs> rather be, I'd rather be in Cheshire, you know. <laughs> Three hundred and thirty-three prosecutions for hurty, hurty words in know, Russia. How many? Probably... How many in this country? How many people is he executed, mate? I don't know. Disagree with, disagree with Wait a minute. I, we were talking about hurty, hurty words in prison. Oh, yeah, how, in many, the, how many in, in this picture, country? John. Oh, come on. You're evading it. How many in this country? Oh, it's about 3,000. It? It's 4,000 and something. So I'm well, sorry. Now, now how, many political, how many political uh, opponents have been murdered in this country? Um, well, 
That's why I want Putin. <laughs> okay, you've got a point, actually. Yeah. You know, he has a way of persuading people to disappear, you know, or fall off balconies in hospitals. Yeah, uh, windows, well, innit? They, yeah. they go flying through windows. How did you do it? Well, he just decided that he wanted to be a bird, and he flew out the window. Oh, yeah. You must all drink, um, what's it called? Uh, yes, Red Give Bull. Wings. Red, Red Bull. Bull. All on Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think wings. Red Bull will be too happy about us talking about that. And Putin. <laughs> nah, well, might be, it, up, cups. it might be it might be Putin's favorite drink. I don't know. Hey, take a drink of this. It gives you wings. Look at that window there. Fly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go. So the answer is nah. And we don't think we're gonna see the results and I think the pound is going to start taking a dive. She's going to be borrowing more. And I think we're going to start to see interest rates go uppity, 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 uppity. Well, I can see Labour, as they always do, as they did certainly with Gordon. Um, I was going to say Gordon Trump, then I couldn't get it but Gordon Brown. They'll be going with a begging bowl to the IMF, won't they? Yep. That's what they'll be doing because they'll go kaput. Well, it's been, it's been one of the biggest tax increases since... Norman Lamont, 1993. Yeah, I mean, that's a long time. I mean, yes, you're taking a big chance doing that. But why, you know, when, when Liz Truss was going to actually invest and do things and take a chance, why did everybody, you know, poo-poo her? Oh, well, there you go then. And why we're on about money, actually. I mean, I wish these banks would keep... No, my, I'm uh... not giving you the fiver that I owe you. Forget it. It isn't happening. No, no, I mean, I, I'll get it back one way or another. The value of one that time. five pound has just gone down out of that budget. Well, I had it funny. invested in Warrington. It's funny because, yeah, <laughs> lucky. Yeah, <laughs> lucky you. And I wish these banks would just keep the cash machines topped up. I mean, I've been, I've, 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 to go, I've been to Did five you try today. robbing another cash machine today? No, yeah, I've been, I've been around them. I've been to five today, and they all said insufficient funds. <laughs> I'll be Rachel Thieves. I don't. I don't know what's going on, mate. I've got five of them I might go around. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Can't get anything out of them. We've had a laugh, and well, it was a laugh. But now it's time to go. Say good night, stats man. Good night, stats man. Good night to our lovely listeners. Thanks for tuning in. Come back next week, please. You were the most sensible out of all of us. Do you know that? Well, someone's got to be. I'm telling you. Okay. Seems that way. Sensible, boring. Mm-hmm. Lamb Rogan Josh. Yes. Gazelle. Rogan, you're Josh, talking yeah. about your cousins there. The gazelle eating one of your cousins. That's. No, yeah. It's a criminal, isn't it? Well, it's actually the cannibal. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Just like raiding cash machines in Warrington. No cash. No cash in any of them. Well, this is your absolutely fabulous digital host of that digital pub called Cheshire Matters signing off and giving a promise to the Labour Controlled Council. Yes, we're coming for you. We are coming. And we're going to be looking at what you're doing with your budgets. And we got people on the inside. We've got lots of chatty ratties within your organization. Ooh. Looking behind you. It's behind you. That absolutely fabulous thing. Still up for debate, you know. Stay alert.